Hey guys, and today I'll be talking about advanced macros and timing versus reliability and advanced timers. So, basically to understand this first, you would need to understand timing versus reliability. And how tight your timings are, are is a number of milliseconds between each burst of your weapon. So, let's say your weapon has a theoretical 200 um, millisecond burst. and what you would do is you want the least amount of time between um, your bursts so you have a higher TTK, um, theoretical TTK. So the problem with this is that since macros are um, inherently inaccurate and unreliable because of the way they work, um, sometimes the macro will trigger f um, earlier sometimes it'll trigger later and that'll lead to and that lead to um stuttering during um during the burst because you burst too early you burst too late so when you want tight timings you also want as tight of timings as you can get but without compromising too much reliability so next we'll talk about reliability so reliability um what you would do to usually get a higher reliability is allow some slack space between um, your bursts. So, what would happen is that you would give, like, let's say you have a theoretical 200 millisecond burst. You would, let's say you want a 26 millisecond slack space, then you'd give a 226 millisecond sleep to it. And what this slack space does is that, let's say the macro triggers um, earlier. If you had just a flat 200 millisecond, it would it would burst too early, and what would happen is that you would miss out on an entire burst before it burst again. So that's really bad because then you would be waiting like 200 milliseconds before you can burst again. But if you give it a 26 millisecond in slack space, you'll get some um, wait between the burst and some unstableness, but at least you don't. At least you have a much lower chance of getting something like um, a failed burst happening. So now ways to fix this to get the tightest time as possible with the best reliability. So usually when you want uh, tight timings or good reliability, what you would do is you wouldn't use the normal sleep function because as shown on the HK website, um, Sleep is usually rounded to 10 or 15.6 milliseconds intervals, which is not good if you have some abnormal amount of burst um, time, like 213, for example. So, um, it's not exactly the most reliable or the best timings for this. So, if you want an advanced um, sleep function, this is like advanced timer, then you would use this function, and what this function does is it allows you up accuracy of up to around one millisecond, which is much better than the 10 millisecond or 15.6 millisecond intervals of um, the normal sleep function. But uh, basically, uh, this will allow you some good timing, some good reliability. But uh, now. If you have a uh, long stuttering, not like a uh, in-between burst stuttering, um, then you probably have a reliability issue, which means that you would give it some more slack space. If you're you're having a constant um, gap between bursts, you're probably having a timing problem, which means that you have too much slack space and you want to tighten those timings. But uh, you will use the um, um, formula I um, showed in the previous video in um, Beginner's Guide to Macros um, and use that to calculate your burst time. And then you would um, use this um, time reliability thing um, with these advanced timers to um, kind of a uh, trial and error, um, the best timings possible for your, um, for your gun. But, um, now timings will vary between, um, 
between uh, different computers because the thing is, like some computers can um, execute commands like much faster than the others, than others, and um, if you have a really slow one, then the macro will take like a bunch of extra time to get um, executed, which you would want tighter, which you want um, less milliseconds. But some, it's really fast, which you would want more milliseconds. But uh, yeah, uh, now let's get into some testing. So as you can see here, my uh, code for M16A4 macro. So, um, one thing I forgot to mention is set batch lines negative one. This will allow you the lowest macro delay possible, which is good for tight timings. Now, here's the entire um, advanced timer code. Uh, allows you um, accuracies of up to one millisecond. Then, here is my toggle code, which if I press backspace, it'll toggle the macro on and off. Um, now here's the actual macro code. Um, notice uh, here it says sleep, but it's not the normal sleep with the space, it's the sleep with parentheses, and this is actually the sleep function up here. But uh, as you can see, it's 226, which is not the same as if I use the function to calculate what the M16 A4 theoretical burst is, which is 200. Now, this t extra 26 is the slack time I gave for reliability issues, and as if you um, see, if I did turn this to 200, what would happen is that I would get some pretty bad reliability because I would be failing bursts left and right, which is not good if you're in the middle of combat. So 226 is the tightest timings I could find on my computer that could handle, um, have high reliability without, uh, well, decent reliability without breaking down like 90% of the time. So, uh, let's turn this on and jump into a battle. Now, uh, as you can see, it burst pretty well. Uh, that was a burst failure right there. Now, uh, the reason why this M16A4 is usually so hard to burst if you have tried to burst it before is that, um, during one of the changes in Phantom Forces, they changed the M16A4 to Never mind, but they changed the M16A4 to be more like more realistic, in which the M16A4 itself, uh, the M16A4 itself, uh, in real life had a holding position burst, which is basically what if you do like one bullet, then you have a three round burst, right? So if you shoot one bullet, then the ne what? Then when you hold down the trigger the next time, you'll shoot two bullets instead of a three bullet, which is, which makes it pretty hard to burst because if you miss one bullet, or if you go to, if you miss, if you miss one bullet, then um, you're only going to shoot uh you're only going to shoot one the next round, which is not good because then you'd have a burst failure. So that's why you need the slack time and the advanced timers to ensure the best reliability possible. But, uh, it bursts pretty well, um, 226, but there is 26 milliseconds of wait time, which does, um, make my TDK a bit worse, but, uh, it should be fine, because I honestly think it's better than missing an entire 200 millisecond burst in the middle. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, let me show you what would happen if I change this to, uh, uh, 
wait, I need to turn this off as I cannot backspace. But let me show you what would happen if I change this to a 200. Now, uh, it does sometimes burst back to back very well, but as you can see, like 90% of the time, you would get a burst failure, which he would skip one entire burst, which is not good happening in the middle of combat, so that is why you need a 226. Now, an alternative way of doing things, if you don't want to troubleshoot the entire thing but this will give you worse performance with your macro which and I do not recommend this at all but uh what you could do is you could just put a extremely short sleep time like let's say 15 in, in the middle and what this would do is it would shoot each bullet as an individual and it would just spam the left mouse button now it does work, but as you can see, my ammo goes down pretty slowly compared to if I actually just normally bursted this gun, which is not good for performance, but if you don't want to go troubleshoot stuff, then this would work, except if you didn't want to troubleshoot stuff, I would uh, recommend just going and using something else, like an AUG-A2. But, uh, yeah, uh. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and thanks for watching. Uh, bye.